We are happy to be bringing you the Guy Dawson Show at the World Center of Broadcast Media here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. When we went to a commercial break, we were talking about the witticisms and the wisdom of Ninon, and we want to spend some of the time at the end here to talk about some of your philosophies on life because you have a lot to share with so many people. And again, this is a part of why you... Why you become successful, I don't know. But I do know that whatever you put into this world, you'll get right back out. It's proven too many times to me. Whatever energy and whatever you put out there and, and the motives, which um, I was just talking to Kwan about the motive, and I think you wanted to ask me that particular question. And I was trying to explain <laughs> that when you two people get on and everything's fine, but you cannot have a motive. If I'm funny to him and I do what he says or she says, and I do it right, then I'll get this back. That'll never work. That That's will so never work. Mm -hmm. so it has to come that whatever you try to do in this world, that you don't want anything back from that person. You just want to fulfill, and, and I have to say I get very selfish with this particular one because whenever I do something for somebody, I get so much happiness, enjoyment of doing it for them. I don't want anything from. I don't, majority of people, I don't want anything from. When I want something, it's very clear to the other person of what I want and I tell them what I want and I'm very very clear with that because I don't want to mix up my thing of giving but you have to make sure you do not have a motive when you're doing something for somebody oh I'll, I'll help them um, I'll do this I'll clean their house because if I do that then I can stay there uh, 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 that'll never work never work mm -hmm. there's a difference between being a, a, a giver and be and manipulative. I'm manipulative. That's it. And that's what a lot of people give are. From your heart. You have to give from your heart and not, want, and not wanting anything back. It's, and yeah. it's a fine, fine line because all of us want something. Everybody wants something. You know, we all need something. We all, but, and I think it all comes back to liking ourselves. And I, I was just saying to the guy in the Quran that we don't like ourselves. So many people, we don't do for us. We, as we, don't do for we. Why? I don't know. Why do you think? Why do you think there are so I, many people who don't like themselves? Because I think, I, I think because they're very unsure of themselves. I think they ought to start realizing that, that they are walking. This is their body. This is all we have. I mean, this is just an instrument here. This is all stuff. It's, this is all stuff. This is really all I have, this whole thing. So I better make it work right. I better understand. If I understand myself, then I, I'm sure I can project better stuff outside. But if you don't love yourself and you don't ca take care of yourself, and you were asking me, she was asking me, she said, what's your secret to your energy? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. She <laughs> doesn't do any of the things right? that they tell you in the <laughs> health books, that's for sure. <laughs> don't do anything right. <laughs> I don't do anything. I was surprised. I, but I do what Ninon likes. I can remember when I was 16, I left home, and, and my mother and father, this is really quite a funny story. My mother and father never, ever asked me why I was leaving home. So <laughs> maybe they wanted me to leave home. I don't know. But what I do know is that I work for one solid year, 20 hours a day to make enough money because I knew that's what I needed to get to London. I was in Torquay at the time, so any of you know Torquay out there. It's a beautiful seaside resort and absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to go to London. And so I made enough money, which I worked 20 hours a day because that's the only thing I knew how to. And I was a waitress and then I ended up running this little hotel. I was only 16. And so I never let those things get in my way of what I couldn't do. It was never what I couldn't do. It was the challenges of what I could do. Wow. So I put it into a challenge. And I always overcame that challenge. So my challenge now is to make everybody out there happy. Yeah that, yeah, that translates to me into the opportunity that there is for people out there who want to become internet talk show hosts. Oh, they can do that. You could become a, a talk show host at WCOBM, and you would have the benefit of being around. A, I, I can train you. An I'll extremely train you. experienced yeah. broadcaster. It, it is within your grasp. It, it fits into the everything philosophy. Everything is within your. Everything is within your grasp. About. Yes, everything you could. Whatever I have, which is, I don't think it's anything strange, but a lot of people like it, which is thank you. But everybody can have the same as I have, the same as you have, the same as you have. They can all have their radio show. They can all write films. They can all do whatever they want to, whatever you want to do, but unless you try it, unless you go out there and, and, and don't be afraid of not succeeding. 
because you never not succeed because you've all just learned how something is not yours. You've actually taken that step and it didn't work, so now you know that that didn't work. You learned something. What did you just learn? You just learned the whole process of something that you're not going to do, but at least you know you're going to do it. So now you go into a next thing and you find something. There is something in every single one of you out there. There is something in there that you do beautifully. Every one of you. So may mm. I ask you, since you are so established um, in business, your career and the life experience, very rich inside you, uh, what is your most want and need right now? My most wanted thing that I need is to take care of our younger generation. And if you don't know it out there, our younger generation are going to be the leaders of the world. They are going to actually take over from all three of us eventually. So my actual whole thing always has been is take care of our younger generation and tell them how great they are, not how bad and stupid they are, because that world goes around too much. Oh, you're stupid, you're an idiot, or you don't have a brain, or you don't know how to, that is not something you put into a child. Mm -hmm. And also the first, um, first five years of a child, bringing them up, mums and dads and single parents and everybody out there, remember, don't keep saying no to your child. Don't say, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, you can't have this. No, no, the whole word is no. Rather than using the word no, just take a couple of minutes and explain to them what it is and what they're doing. That's all. Because that no goes into 16, 17, 18, and it becomes the rest of their life as no, I can't do this, no, I can't yeah, do that. It is so embedded true. in them at five years old. Because oh, that's so all we do is say, no, careful, no, don't do that. I and saw we, recently a baby like that, and the, the, the boy is two years old, and he just, no, no. Oh. No, all the time. Like I, I can testify to that being definitely not good that programming for That doesn't come person. from the child because the child's too young. That comes from the outside, whomever. No. Oh. no. And you, so let's get rid of the word no for our younger generation. To explain. Take that little bit of time. Just explain and say, let me explain why you, why, you know, be careful. Or, you know, this is the reason why. You know, just be careful. But no, because then that takes them into the teenagers. And then all through their life, they become no. Everything's no. They can't do it. Would you like to talk a little bit about the uh, Kids Talk Foundation? Oh, the you Kids Talk Foundation, well, yeah. yeah. Well, that was a, a program I had where I gave the younger generation from 12 years to, to 18 years, I gave them a platform to speak out. And I was actually at Beverly Hills High School for five years and did my show out of there. Mm -hmm. And I had children from the inner city come. Everybody from the inner city would come, not just Beverly Hills kids. It was from all over. They would come up and they'd actually, some of them had never seen a library. And they would look at this library at the Beverly Hills, you know, high school. And they would say, wow, this is amazing. So I gave them the opportunity. They actually saw what part of, what uh, another part of the world was like from where they were living. And it was just amazing. And then I was the founder of the Hell Roach Awards for Loyola Marymount University. Hey, come on, I'm bragging some now. Big, you know, yeah, I don't want to brag anymore. That's enough. Bob Hope, Audrey Hepburn, some big, big hitters have won uh, this award that she established. We could do this show well, for <laughs> about three hours with Nina. However, we are near the end. Uh, of our edition of the Guy Dawson Show for today. Nina, how can people get in contact with you? Um, they can reach me by my phone number, 310-867-5959. would love to hear from you. Also, you can email me at ninon at ninonspeaks.com. You can go to my website at www.ninonspeaks.com. You can reach me on Facebook, which is um, Facebook forward slash ninondd, uh, forward slash ninonspeaks, forward slash NDD properties. Yeah, I do real estate too. <laughs> And don't forget to tune in to the Ninon Live Show at 4 o'clock today, just a couple of hours yeah, away. She will be back in front of this camera. I will see you all next week with the next edition of the Guy Dawson Show. Take care of yourselves. Happy Thank birthday. You. Happy Thank birthday. You. <laughs>